Good morning, everybody. Sean Elvis again, back with another sermon. Praise the Lord. We're here to praise the Lord again. I love praising the Lord every single day, but uh, he's given me another beautiful message today. He's so good. And I want to share that with you guys here today. So I'm going to just hop right in. If you have a King James Bible, you, uh, our opening reading will be in 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. <laughs> but as always, we will begin with our soul stirring songs in hymn book to praise the Lord. <clears throat> We're going to be singing. Tell it to Jesus, number 351. Tell it to Jesus. This is an old song written way back in the day. Uh, I love these old hymns. They're still good. Um, we can still praise the Lord today just as much as we did back then. And we can still tell all our problems to Jesus <laughs> just as much as they did back then. And so... Uh, Let's sing it out. There's four verses, and uh, let's uh, let's tell Jesus how happy we are to praise Him and how happy and thankful we are that He died for us. All right, here we go. Tell it to Jesus, 351. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks and bidding? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that two men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious what shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that we can't tell Jesus, no matter what you've done or what you're going through, you can always tell it to Jesus. Or as I said before, our opening reading is in 2 Kings chapter 20, starting in verse number 1. King James Bible says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth, and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in the sight, in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore, uh, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle of the court, that word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, 
On the third day thou shalt go into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And as I, and Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it a boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign of the Lord will heal me? And that I shall go into the house of the Lord the third day. And Isaiah said, This sign shall thou have of the Lord, and the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken of. Shall the shadow go back forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go upon ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backwards ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees back by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues, my brothers and sisters. It's Sean Elvis. Good to see you again this morning. Uh, in this opening reading that we read today, um, we read how Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, excuse me, the king of Judah, got very sick. And he was so sick that he was about to die, all right? The prophet of the Lord, Isaiah, said, you're surely going to die. And the king, what did he do? He turned to the Lord and he prayed. He prayed. He played pleading to the Lord to do something to help him. And because of his faithfulness that he's shown the Lord in the past, the Lord uh, heard his prayer and he healed him miraculously from this disease. I don't know what disease he had, but he had some a terminal disease that he was going to die from. Anyway, uh, he fully recovered. <laughs> Praise God for that. I'm glad Hezekiah got to see the healing power of the Lord. But friends, today my message is called spiritual habits. Spiritual habits. What is a habit? You know, we have physical habits, things we do every day. You may have your habits that you do. Um, but I want to talk about spiritual habits today. A habit is something that we do, that we train our brains to do almost instinctively or automatically without even thinking about it. You know, that means that, uh, that you're doing something, you don't even think about it. It's just a habit, something you do. You know, this and this could be either good or it could be bad. It could be a good or bad habit depending on uh, whatever thing you're doing, right? But it's just amazing how God created us uh, with this ability to learn things and, and form habits. And I want to submit to you today that King Hezekiah had a good habit in regards to praying and praying to the Lord when he was in trouble. Um, let's look back in 2 Kings chapter 19. Go back one chapter. Or excuse me. Let me get there. Yeah, 2 Kings chapter 19, we're going to go back, and we're going to read in verse 15. <clears throat> 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 15, Bible says, And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord, and said, O God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, for all the kingdoms of the earth thou hast made heaven and earth. And flip back again to chapter 18. And we're going to read verse 5 in chapter 18. The Bible says, and it's talking about King Hezekiah, obviously. He says, He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. He trusted in the Lord. Verse 6, For he clave to the Lord and departed from uh, and departed not, excuse me, from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whither, whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. So it appears here that King Hezekiah had a habit of trust in the Lord. He had a habit of praying to the Lord. King Hezekiah, if, if any king knew a thing or two about good or bad habits, it's King Hezekiah. He was one of the greatest kings of uh, Israel, or, or the, uh, the Israelites. Um, 
and he pleased the Lord, right? The Bible says he didn't, he didn't always do the right thing, okay? But he strived to form some good habits. He got a lot of bad habits out of the kingdom um, during his uh, reign <clears throat> as a nation, not just for himself, but as a whole nation. He, he cleaned up uh, the bad habits that people were getting involved in, and, and particularly the idolatry, right? He saw the bad habits that, that, uh, that his people were doing, and and he and he and he got him to change. You know, he used his power and his influence to uh, help change people and and uh, really turn things around and get people to start forming better habits. But what I want to point out here is that King Hezekiah was a king who led by example. Okay, he didn't just boss people around <laughs> and and tell people what to do. Hey, you guys need to form these habits. No, he actually followed the commandments himself. The Bible says, right? He actually did. The, the right thing himself. He formed the good habits, so he knew from personal experience what what it took and what it was all about to uh, form good habits. You know, a lot of us sometimes it's easy to tell people what to do, right? But it's harder to actually do something, right? Do it for yourself and form that habit. Excuse me, yourself. Um, you know, we oftentimes we know the right thing to do. But we just don't do it, right? Because maybe we have a, a, a bad habit already formed and, and we just have this habit of doing something bad, right? And, and we don't go to the Lord and we don't tell, tell it to Jesus and say, hey, help me out with this bad habit, Lord. You know, maybe um, if you're anything like me, you have a bad habit of, of waiting till the last minute to get things done, right? You just, you put it off and you put it off and you procrastinate and and you wait and wait, and then it's the last minute, and you're like scrambling to get it done. <laughs> At least that's how I am. I mean, more often than I care to admit, but but uh, back to my sermon. Uh, King Hezekiah himself, he got into a habit of praying, right? You know, uh, I've said it uh, time and time again on this channel, you know, we should get into a habit of praying every single day. The Bible says pray without ceasing, you know. Um, I, the good, the good habit I have is I pray before every time I eat a meal, I always say a prayer, you know, it's not a long length, lengthy prayer, uh, but you know, I'll, I'll thank God for my food real quick and I'll say a quick prayer and you know, that's a good habit that I formed. Um, but notice how in our opening reading, King Hezekiah prayed to the Lord when he was in trouble. Okay. I mean, he, this man was hopeless. He was on his deathbed. He was terminally ill. I mean, even the prophet Isaiah said, you're surely going to die, right? You have no hope. And well, what does he do? He prays anyway. He prays to the Lord, right? So one quick point I want to make is don't wait until you're in big trouble to, uh, to do something right, right? Form the habit. That way, when trouble comes along, you're already, you already have the habit of doing something. But that's a side note. But uh, I think that in this particular instance, I think King Hezekiah, that wasn't the case, right? I think King Hezekiah just had a habit of praying. He just always prayed to the Lord. Every time he was in trouble or anything like that, he just had a habit of praying. I mean, I don't think he had to sit around and think, well, Isaiah, I'm going to die. What should, what should I do? You know, like, no, he just, he just automatically was like, well, I'm in trouble again. I guess I'll pray. That's what I always do, right? He didn't even think about it. He just naturally had the habit of praying. It was a reflex. And, you know, so praise God for habits, you know, that we could form habits like that, that uh, <laughs> eventually saved Hezekiah's life, right? It could have very well saved his life, this good habit that he had. He prayed to the Lord. Lord heard him and uh, he healed him miraculously. Amen. <clears throat> habits are, you know, something that, you know, we should form that way. We don't always have to think. We don't. We could kind of turn our brain off a little bit, and uh, just kind of put autopilot on. Um, but you know, the thing about habits is they don't just happen overnight, right? It takes a little work. It takes a little effort, a little discipline to form a habit, right? I mean, studies have shown. Scientific studies have shown that it takes an average of 66 days. 66 days, you know, some people can learn it sooner, some people learn it later, but it takes an average of 66 days to train your brain to form a new habit. 66 days, that's about uh, two months, you know, that means you have to do the same thing, repetitive, over and over, every single day, for 66 days, in order for your brain to register, hey, 
We got it. This is a new habit. We don't have to think about it anymore. We're just going to naturally do it. You know, that's 66 days. That's not really that long of a time, right? I mean, King Hezekiah, I believe, had this habit of praying. And, you know, um, when things got tough, he prayed because it was just his habit, right? He had done it so long and so many times that it just became natural to him. You know, I think um, so many times we only do things even though we know that they're good to do, right? Like, well, I've already said that. Um, but the thing is, we should we should form our habits. Maybe it takes us 66 days. Maybe we could do it shorter. Maybe we could do it longer. Um, but I want you to think of some habits that you do every day without even thinking, right? Like, like for example, eating, right? We all eat every single day. We're in the habit of eating. We need to eat, right? We need to brush our teeth every single day. We need to shower every day. I hope you're in the habit of bathing and showering at least once a day. Um, these are basic habits that, you know, these are good habits, uh, physical habits, but I want to also talk about spiritual habits today, you know. But what are some bad habits you might have, right? Some bad habits are uh, maybe you watch too much TV. You spend too much time on your smartphone. Um, you have a habit of sleeping in when you should be waking up and getting, uh, getting up. Maybe you're snacking too much. You're eating a little too many snacks, right? There's a lot of bad habits we can have, but, uh, my point is this, uh, my point is this, you know, I, I, I want you guys to consider what kind of habits you have because the habits that we have make us or break us, right? A lot of the times, you know, to have success is just forming the habits, right? Forming the habits, that way you make it easier. You know, it's a lot easier to be successful if you can just do it automatically because you're in the good habit of doing uh, of doing good, right? Um, now, you don't have to turn there, but I want to look at a few instances in the Bible in uh, the book of Luke and the book of Acts and show some examples of some good habits, some good spiritual habits um, that the Bible talks about just to kind of, uh, kind of get us an idea of uh, this whole topic of spiritual habits. Um, the first one we're going to look at is in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 in verse 16. We're going to see a good habit that Jesus had here. Luke chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible says, And he came, that's Jesus, and Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up, for to read. I'm going to stop there because the point is, the Bible says, and his custom was that he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. Jesus had a custom here. He had a habit. <laughs> That's what I call it. He had a habit of going to church on the Sabbath day. He didn't have to think, <laughs> what am I going to do this Sabbath day? No, no, it's his habit. He always did it. It was his custom. I'm going to church. It's the Sabbath day. I'm going to church. I'm going to read my Bible every single day, right? That's what Jesus did. Let's look at another example. The next one I'm going to turn to is in Acts chapter uh, 17. And we're going to read uh, the first three verses. The Bible says in Acts 17 verse 1, uh, Now when they had passed through uh, Amph I can't say this word, Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath day and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. We also see another good habit here of the Apostle Paul, okay? He seemed to have a habit of preaching to lost people, preaching to unbelievers. You know, he didn't wait around for unbelievers to come to him. No, what does the Bible say? It says, And Paul, as his manner was, as his habit was, he made a habit of, he went in unto them. He went. He didn't wait. He didn't wait around for people to come to him. He went to them. He had a habit of going, seeking the lost people and saying, hey, I'm going to preach you the gospel. I want to see you guys saved. Okay? That's a good habit that uh, the Apostle Paul had. Uh, the Bible says, in his man 
as his manner was, or as I read it, as his habit was. You could read it that way, right? He had a good habit of preaching the gospel. You know, what are what are some other good habits that we that we could have spiritually that strengthen our spirit? Turn your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And while you're turning there, I'll read for you Colossians chapter 4, verse 15. Uh, the Bible says in Colossians 4, it says, Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nyphus in the church which is in his house. The Bible says that we should salute the brethren. What does that mean to salute? Right? That's what I think of when I uh, salute like a soldier. Um, but salute, you know, just means like to acknowledge somebody, to uh, show respect, you know, to be friendly to, to them, you know, to don't just ignore them, but salute them, acknowledge them. You know, we should, uh, we should be making a habit of being extra friendly and extra polite and, and, and respectful of, 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 I mean, everybody in general, but I mean, the Bible says, especially the brethren, right? Our brothers and our sisters in the Lord. We should make it a good habit of saluting the brethren. Every time we see them, be extra polite, extra. Hey, it's great to see you, you know? <laughs> But uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 26. Oh, I lost my place. Anyway, I have it in my notes. Uh, it says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 26 says, Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. You know, sometimes we get in the habit of greeting people. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? And, and it just gets repetitive. It just gets kind of like have we just habitually say it but we don't actually even mean what we say right it's just kind of like a habit um i mean it's a good habit right to say hey how's it going to somebody but you know if you don't really mean it it loses its its strength it loses its uh its meaning right um that's why i think the bible specifically says greet each other with a holy kiss right it's not just saying hey don't just do it at a habit but make it holy. Make it mean something. You know, every time you greet somebody, it should mean something. It shouldn't just be an automatic, you know, habitual, hey, yeah, how you doing? Yeah, all right, talk to you later. Right? No, it should be like a, hey, I really am concerned about you. I care about you. How are you? Right? Uh, that's where my that's my point uh, that I'm uh, that I'm getting here. Right? Is to we should be greeting people. We should be. I mean, especially the brethren, right? But we should just be greeting all people as if we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible calls us ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what's an ambassador? An ambassador is, is somebody who represents an authority figure, like a king or, 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 a, or a, uh, you know, anybody who's, <laughs> who's an authority, a president, um, something to that effect, right? Um, but we should, we should be uh, greeting people, with the title of ambassador of Jesus Christ, right? We are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we greet people, we should act as such. You know, an, an ambassador is somebody who represents somebody else. So when you greet somebody, you're representing Jesus, right? So you need to represent them um, uh, as holy as you possibly can. That's why it says greet them with... Uh, uh, let me look back... <laughs> This is greet all the brethren with a holy kiss, right? <clears throat> so, in other words, you know, we should take a little bit more pride in how we uh, greet um, people in general, like I said, but especially the brethren. That's what the Bible says specifically, salute the brethren. Um, you know, a lot of the times, too many times, we just say, hey, how's it going? And we don't really mean it, right? We don't really actually mean the words we're saying it's just a habit right <laughs> um, but consider forming a habit of uh, um, every time you greet somebody make it a habit of hey no I'm actually representing the Lord Jesus Christ right here I'm an ambassador of the Lord so take it a little more seriously go the extra mile you know when you say you say Sean like I can't do that Sean like I'm already in the habit you know it takes too much time to do that well hey listen you know yeah, it's going to be hard at first. You know, forming new habits, good habits, takes a little work. You know, it could take you 66 days, right? The first 66 days are the hardest. But once you form that habit, you got it. It's easy. It's automatic. Then you're automatically going to train your brain to like, okay, every single time that I meet with somebody, 
I'm an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. It happens automatically um, and it becomes routine, right? Um, and, you know, that's exactly what I, I want to discuss next. A perfect segue. Uh, I want to talk about routines, right? Routines that we need to create for ourselves or habits. You know, routines uh, help us grow spiritually. Um, you know, just like Jesus went to the temple uh, every Sabbath day and read the Bible. And the Apostle Paul had a routine or a habit of, of preaching the gospel. You know, we need to get ourselves in a good routine. You know, we're going to uh, make life a lot easier on ourselves if we have a good routine, if we have these good habits. Um, it's, it's hard to do things that your brain is not trained to do. So we just have to think, you know, well, what do I want to train my brain to do? What habits do I want to form? You know, what what is going to help me grow spiritually that I could learn to do? You know, if, if you're not a custom to reading the Bible every day, you know, that can be tough, but you know, you know that reading this book every day is going to help you grow spiritually. So, um, if you're not used to reading the Bible every day, I always tell people, Hey, start with one Bible verse every single day. It's easy. It takes you like two seconds. Open your Bible up, read one Bible verse every day. And in 66 days, you will have a habit of reading your Bible. Okay. And then once you have the habit it's automatic. Every single day at the same time, you're going to open up your Bible and read it. And before you know it, you're not going to be just reading one verse anymore. You're going to be reading two verses, three verses, four. You're going to read the whole chapter. And then, <laughs> who knows, before long, you could be reading two chapters, three chapters, right? And that's how you can eventually get into the habit of reading your Bible every day and finishing your Bible throughout the year, you know. But it starts with just the first 66 days, you have to tough it out. Read that one verse a day. Start small. Start small because um, the the trick is to learn the habit first and then you can increase uh, the amount or whatever you want to do later. But start easy. Build the habit and then increase. Like I said, start with one verse a day. Six to six uh, days later, then you could uh, have read ten verses a day, whatever, right? Whatever the case is. Um I mean, look, King Hezekiah, uh, if he didn't have a habit of praying when he was in trouble, he might have not said that prayer. You know, Isaiah might have just told him, hey, you're going to die. And he might have just said, well, I'm going to die. That's it. It's over. But but he didn't. Right. He had a habit of praying, I believe. And and immediately uh, Isaiah told him, hey, you're going to die. And he said, I better pray. I'm in trouble again. I better pray. He just he just did it automatically. And, you know, it, it could have saved his life. You know, potentially it could have saved his life. Um, this spiritual habit that he had, though, of prayer. You know, uh, we should get in the habit of praying, right? At least once a day, right? Like I said, I pray before every meal. That's good. But I always uh, make it a habit of praying or um, at the end of the day, right? At the end of the, I mean, I pray before every meal. But at the end of the day, I try to make it a point. To uh, sit down and have a, a, a discussion with the Lord. I try to tell Jesus uh, what I need to tell him, right? And, and how my day went and uh, what I need and uh, what I'm worried about and all these things, right? And uh, that's a good habit that you should have. You know, it only takes five, ten minutes to sit down and talk with Jesus, you know. Uh, pray once a day, you know. I mean, to, if you're not into the habit, like I say, you start with one minute. Pray to Jesus one minute a day. Work your way up from there, right? Because you could save your own life. Just like King Hezekiah could have saved his life through this prayer, right? You know, it's, it's not a joke. Friends, it's not a joke. I, don't, I, I mean, I'm laughing, but, I, you know, I, it's not a joke. You know, you could save somebody's life just praying for them every day, making it a habit to pray for somebody, you know, your, your friend or your loved one. Um, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, the Bible says pray without ceasing, it wouldn't say that without a reason because it means something. It's powerful. Um, it saved King Hezekiah's life, you know, and, you know, that's hard to do. You know, I would, I would agree uh, that praying without ceasing and like never stopping, you know, that's impossible to do if you don't have a habit of praying, right? The first thing you need to do is form the habit of praying every day, and then you could work your way up to like praying without ceasing. But I think that's what it means. Uh, What's another spiritual habit that you could form? You know, uh, reading the Bible. We talked about that. Uh, praying. How about memorizing the Bible? You know, 
That's a good habit to have. Or how about how about singing the hymns? Singing the hymn every day. Singing a song. Pick a song, your favorite song, and sing it every day. You know, that's what I do. <laughs> so how about singing in the shower? <laughs> I like singing in the shower. But, but yeah, you know, like I always have a routine, you know, every single day to 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 make sure my spirit is strong and 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 healthy. Um, I like to sing in the morning and praise the Lord with songs and hymns. And then in the afternoon, I'll read my Bible. And then in the evening, I like to pray. You know, that's that's how I do it, you know. But find out whatever works for you, you know. Get in a good habit and strengthen your spirit and be healthy, you know. Just like just like you eat every day, right? You don't just eat uh, uh, um, once a day and say, oh, I'm good, right? Right? Now, you know, how, how about coming to church, right? C- c- going to church, uh, that's a good habit to get in. Jesus went to church every Sabbath day. You know, a lot of people... Um, make that a good habit, you know, 66 days, 66 days. You know, if you, if you haven't done it before, you could form a new habit in 66 days, you know, um, and if you do something once a week, what's that? Uh, 66, uh, uh, 66 weeks, you know, a little over a year, right? Yeah, maybe a year and year and a quarter or so, you know, um, but we need to keep ourselves spiritually strong by forming uh, good habits. You know, that's how we're going to do it. That's how we're going to succeed in our spiritual life is, is, is habits. It's going to help us because it makes things easier because we don't we won't have to work so hard once we have a habit. You know, just like um, you just like eating, you know, you don't even think about it. You just do it every day. But what did Jesus say about eating? He said, he said, uh, uh, man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, Matthew chapter four. You know Jesus said, "Just like you eat three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you should have a spiritual habit that you have too." Like I said, for me, I like to sing in the morning, read the Bible in the afternoon, pray in the evening. You know, I have my three spiritual meals every day. Good habits that you could form to keep yourself healthy and uh, spiritually strong. Okay, so um, there shouldn't be a day that you go without reading your Bible. Just like there isn't a day that you go without eating. Now, I know some people fast once in a while. That's, that's different, but we, we, we need this Bible just as much as we need food for our spirit, right? We need physical food to feed our bodies, but we need spiritual food to feed our spirit. If we don't pray to the Lord every day, we should be praying. Notice the Lord said, give us this day our daily bread. You know, every single day we need to eat. We need to pray. We need to read our Bible. You know, that's what's going to keep us spiritually strong. And that's what's going to protect us from spiritual diseases, right? Um, We need to form good habits. Habits are going to be what drives us to success. Um, Because us humans are creatures of habit. You know, we like to do the same thing again and again. The same thing we did yesterday and the day before. So I get it. Sometimes it's hard to break a bad habit because you've been doing it so long. But 66 days, my friends. 66 days. That's all all it takes to form a new habit and kick that old habit to the curb. I know it's easier said than done. But, um, you know, as summer's coming to a close now, you know, maybe, maybe we could start thinking about opening up the fall uh, season, the new season, and uh, challenge ourselves a little bit, right? To replace those bad habits that maybe we did in the summertime and uh, replace those with good habits, right? Now's the time. Now's the appointed time for salvation, my friends, (laughs) to form new habits and strengthen your spirit and uh, connect closer to God, you know, because, you know, maybe it's prayer, maybe it's reading your Bible, Memorizing the Bible, singing a song, learning to play an instrument, whatever the case is uh, that you want to learn and form a new habit on. You say, well, Sean, I already do that stuff. I already have those good habits. Well, good for you, man. You're awesome. Uh, Maybe you could help somebody else form those habits, right? Maybe you could be in the habit or start a habit of helping other people form good habits, okay? Or uh, maybe you can increase those habits that you already have. Memorize more Bible. Read more Bible. Preach the gospel more. <laughs> Increase the good habits that you already have. 
or you could branch off, branch off a little bit, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you read your Bible and you pray, but you don't go soul winning, you know, maybe you go soul winning, but you don't give the charity, whatever the case is, you know, um, let's try to break the bad habits. My, Cause here's my point. My point is we all have some area of our lives that we can improve on and we need to focus in on these areas and improve them. Why? Why should we improve our, why should we improve Sean? Glad you asked. Matthew chapter 19. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 19. And this is the last scripture and I'm almost done. But I just wanted to cover this last uh, story here where a certain man who thought he had good habits was talking to Jesus and, uh, and, and, and he's kind of telling Jesus, hey, there's nothing else I can improve on. And, and we're going to see Jesus challenge him and say, no, 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 no. There is a way that you can improve. Matthew chapter 19. Um, the story of the of, of a certain rich young man. Okay, uh, starting in verse 16, the Bible says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. This is a great verse, by the way, to prove that uh, Jesus is God, but that's another sermon. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Verse 18, he said unto him, which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, we're going to read to verse 22. Where are we at? Verse 20. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I ye yet? Or excuse me, what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast, and give unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I'm going to stop there. Um, look, sometimes in order to form good habits, we're going to have to make a sacrifice. It's going to hurt a little bit. Let's just face it. There's only so many hours in a day and we can't do everything at once. So we're going to have to make a choice, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to do this or do you want to do that? Do we want to form a good habit or are we going to stick with our old bad habit? We have to choose what's important. We have to set our priorities. Unfortunately, this young rich man, the cost was too high. You know, Jesus kept telling him, you know, you have to follow all these commandments. You know, you listed all the commandments. Honor thy father and my, thy mother. You know, don't murder, don't steal. And he said, I did all these things, right? And he said, well, if you want to be more perfect, give up all your possessions and follow me. And unfortunately, the rich man's like, yes, that costs too much. Not going to do that. You know, <clears throat> like I said, we're all going to have to make choices in our life. What are you willing to give up to be closer to God, to be spiritually stronger What would you give up? If you had the opportunity to walk with Jesus Christ on this earth, on this planet, just for one day, what would you give up? What's that worth to you? To walk and talk with Jesus. To have a friend, a brother, like no other, who loves you. So much, he would sacrifice Everything for you, his own life for you. What would you give for one day with Jesus? My friends, there is no other such a friend or brother like Jesus. You could tell him anything. He'll always be good to you. He'll always love you. He'll willingly die for you. Now, the, now the point of the story here that I read, Matthew chapter 19, is... Um, not that we have to give up all of our possessions to go to heaven. That's not the point Jesus was making, okay? The point Jesus was making is that we can't earn our salvation, right? This rich young man thought, well, what, what commandments do I have to follow to go to heaven? And Jesus said, all of them, <laughs> right? And, and the guy kind of proudly said, you know, well, I've done it all. And Jesus said, well, have you done this? And, and he was kind of making a point that, 
um, we can't earn our salvation, you know, no matter how good we are. But the point Jesus was making was that, and and this is not to discourage you guys, um, you know, I, I want you guys to start new habits, right? And 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 this is not to discourage you from doing that. But you know, the point that I'm trying to make is that there's always something that we could do more, right? Jesus was pushing this guy. He, you know, he was saying, "Hey, look, you can't earn your salvation." Right, because there's always something better that you can improve on. He said, "Oh, you've done this commandment. You've done this one. Well, how about this? How about this? Oh, how have you done this? You know." And Jesus kept kept telling him, "Well, have you given up all your possessions?" <laughs> and that's when the guy was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute! I can't do that. I'm not willing to do that." You know. Um, so, the, the, you know, the point is, we can't earn our salvation. That's a free gift. Um, but that's another sermon. But, but you know, we can form good habits and increase those habits and, and be better and become more perfect, right? Uh, we should never stop growing spiritually is the point that I'm trying to make, you know. Um, I mean, we can look at all the commandments Jesus, Jesus laid out for the rich young man, you know. Um, but we could sum it all up in love thy neighbor as thyself, right? And there's always more things that we can do to show our love to our our fellow man our neighbor right there's always more things and you know a a lot of the habits that i spoke of earlier will help us you know will help us do that accomplish that mission read more bible you know pray more because jesus said love thy neighbor as thyself so friends how can we love our neighbor more if we don't even love ourselves enough to read our bibles every day (laughs) and take care of our own spirit how can we then go out and love other people, love our neighbor? You know, so the first thing is we have to love ourselves enough to heal our own spirit and get in the good habits and take care of ourselves first. Then we can go out there and love our neighbor and increase and increase and increase and so on and so forth. You know, but we first have to develop the good habits for ourselves to take care of our own spirit and be spiritually strong on our own. Okay? Like I said, read the Bible every day, pray every day. You know, and and then how can we love our neighbor? You know, but first, like I said, we have to love ourselves. Got to take care, better care of ourselves. You say, I can't do it, Sean. I've never done it. I don't know if I've done it. I've tried before and I've quit. You know, 66 days, friends. 66 days. That's all it takes. Form a new habit. Start easy. Start really easy. All you got to do is get through the first 66 days, form the new habit. And then you can increase from there. Right? And then it's a lot easier once you have that habit. Praying every day. And in two months, boom! You have a habit of praying every day. You won't even have to think about it. It won't even be hard for you anymore. It's a new habit. And you and Jesus, you start telling Jesus, talking to Jesus every day, you and, you and him are going to be like this. You're going to be so tight. <laughs> I mean, I love King Hezekiah, and I, there's so much more I could say about him and about this topic. Um, King Hezekiah, one of the, one of the most best kings of all, right? I mean, you can argue, you know, King David's pretty good, King Solomon. Um, but you know, King Hezekiah, he threw out so many junk and he, he turned all the bad habits and of his people around. And it was, it's just a great motivation right that we can do it we can we can change our lives we can change our habits and and start serving the lord right so friends my message today uh, is simple you know it's it's just your habits could save your life if you form a good habit king hezekiah had a habit of praying could say could have saved his life right it, it might have right i mean i'm not going to say for sure it, it did but it looks that way to me Right, you could make a case, you know. So let's not be afraid to throw out the junk in our lives and and to form better and healthier spiritual habits. You know, whatever it takes. You know, Jesus said, "Hey, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off." You know, if if whatever thing you got going on in your life is causing you to do this bad habit and avoid a good one, cut it out. You need to stop watching TV. Just Get rid of the TV, right? You don't need it. Read your Bible, right? Like I said, don't underestimate the power of a good spiritual habit. It could save your life. Because our God is so powerful that there's no limit to what He can do. You know, And I promise you this, if you determine in your heart 
that you want to start a new spiritual habit for the Lord, he's going to make that possible. He's going to give you a way and, and, and show you a way that you can do that. And it's not going to be easy. The devil's going to stand in your way. He's going to do everything he can to get you to stop that, to get you not to do that new good habit for you. He's going to make it rough and tough and you're going to think it's impossible, but it's not impossible because our God is so great. He can do the impossible and he can help you do the impossible. That's my message for the day, friends. Um, the last thing I want to say is, is this in Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. You don't have to turn there. But uh, Jesus said, I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So when we're praying, when we're talking to Jesus and we're telling Jesus, hey, I have this bad habit, Jesus. I want to get, this, I want to get over this. He's going to help us. But we need to believe that he's going to help us. Jesus, Jesus told us that if we believe, we will receive. <laughs> so in closing, you know, if you have a bad habit, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. A lot of, all of us have formed a bad habit at one point in our life. Just uh, pray to God, tell it to Jesus, give it to Jesus, give it to God, and say, hey, I want to I cut this bad habit out. I want to form this new habit and believe it. Believe it. And God will help you achieve it. No more doubting yourself. Okay? Be confident that, hey, you told it to Jesus. Jesus is going to help you. Okay? And say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to form this new habit. 66 days. I'm going to form this new habit. It's going to happen through the help of God. The Almighty God, our great God in heaven. And uh, let's break these bad habits and strengthen our spirit today, friends. And and uh, let's build some new, better habits and, and be spiritually stronger so we can get out there and uh, serve the Lord and bring the Lord honor and glory. Uh, that's my message for the day, guys. God bless you guys. Thank you for this message. And um, in closing, we're going to read uh, Psalm 125. That's going to be our closing um, reading, Psalm 125. But I'm going to bow in prayer and you guys uh, have a great day. In the Lord Jesus. God bless you. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, too often uh, we only do the right thing when, when it's convenient for us to do the right thing. Uh, we don't do the right thing always because we formed a, a habit or a routine necessarily, Lord. Um, but I ask that uh, you help us understand and remember the importance of learning good habits just like King Hezekiah did in, in our prayer life, in our Bible reading. Lord, help, help show us in our lives our bad habits, maybe things that we didn't even realize we're doing that we can replace with, with good habits that will help us grow spiritually. Lord, help us forsake the bad things and never turn back to them again and, and replace, uh, replace those with good things that are, that are pleasing in your sight, Lord. Um, that will help us strengthen our spirit. You know, we want habits that will bring you honor and glory, Lord. Habits that will lead to uh, the saving of our loved ones or our friends or our families or our neighbors or any lost soul out there, Lord. We want habits that will help us love our neighbors. And we want habits that will help us love ourselves and live more fulfilling and prosperous lives. Lord, I ask that you help us learn from the habits that will encourage uh, those around us. I ask that, uh, Father, you help the people listening and hearing this message to uh, see the habits in their lives and examine those and give them the strength and confidence in themselves to, uh, to accomplish what would bring you uh, glory, Lord, that they know that through your help there's nothing that they can't achieve and no new height that they can't reach. Lord, I ask that you give them boldness to set a to set a goal that would make you proud. That if you were to come back tomorrow, that you would see us working towards our goal and be proud to see us working for that, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for this message and giving us the ability to form habits. We thank you for much, so much for King Hezekiah and healing him so many years ago. Lord, Please hear our prayers and just like you heard his prayers and help us achieve new and greater habits than ever before so we can uh, transform our lives and transform the lives of those around us. 
Lord, thank you so much for showing us the way and never giving up on us. I ask, Lord, that you also silence the critics and the gainsayers out there who will tell us we can't do it and it can't be done. Lord, have nobody and nothing stand in our way. Lord, help us put everybody else to shame. All the gainsayers, help us silence them, Lord, and form these good habits. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Closing reading, Psalms 125. Psalm 125. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. From henceforth, even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto the crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Amen. Amen. God bless.